Automate your text while being able to change the text within each layer. In the last tutorial I did, we created a ribbon of text and the text didn't change. So it was the same text throughout the whole ribbon board. Well, some of you reached out and asked how you could change the text while maintaining that spacing because when we duplicated the layer, it appeared in exactly in the space right next to the last text. And it was all predicated on the fact that the text was a given length and it was kind of hard coded that way so that it was able to read that and move it over. But now if you want to have some variable text, we need to make a few more adjustments to uh, the, the position of the text layer. And also it also needs to read out both the current text and the text before it so that it can pos position it appropriately when you duplicate your text and have it sit out the exact length that you want. So that's what we're diving in today. And if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do so share with your friends, and help us build a bigger sports community here on YouTube. All right, let's jump in. So I got the question asking, what if you wanted to have different text for each one of these layers? So right now, the way we have this set up, everything has the same text. So the, the width and all the math is exactly the same. But what happens if I hit EE here to pull up all my expressions and I take off the source text. You can see that it overlaps with this other text. And if I do the same thing here, it I'm just alt clicking on the stopwatch. So now all these say baller effects, so they are laid out correctly. But if I go to change this back to automate, you can see it's overlapping. So how can we go in and fix this? So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off all my source text here. There we go. And I'm going to turn all these off. We're really just focusing on these two. And once we get these two set up, we will be just peachy. So let me highlight both of those and scoot these back here. So we can see baller effects is overlapping our automate your text. And what we want is for baller effects to be offset exactly the same way as all the automate your text was offset. So what we need to do here is go back into our X position and we're going to leave the anchor point set to the middle. And that's going to, that's going to inform how we do the math on X position. So let's jump in here. We need to create another variable because we need to find the width of, of the current text, of this text on this layer, and we need to find the width of the text of this layer. And that way we can use math to separate them out based on the length of the text, if we're gonna have some variable text links in here. So this one doesn't need to change. That's gonna be our base layer. So let's hop into the X position of our second layer and add a new variable, hit enter, and we're gonna call this one previous distance for short. And I'm going to pick whip to the layer. This is important. Pick whip to the net layer name. And then we're gonna add dot source rect at time. Start typing and then select it so it comes in camel case correct. And then we wanna find the width. All right, so just like this one, we switch to index plus one. We always want this, we always want the previous distance to look at the layer that's index plus one from this one. So the, the layer below, technically, in the timeline. So index plus one, we want to find the previous distance. And when I click off, nothing happens because we didn't add it into our final equation down here. So we need to type in previous distance and it pop populates. So let's just select that so we know it's right. And when we click off, all our effects goes way over here. So as I pointed out, anchor point we have stuck to the middle of both of these. So what we're really looking for is not the full width of this text, 
the width of this text only from the middle to the end here. So we need to go in to both of these and divide it by two. So we're looking for the second half of the width here and the first half of the width here. So x distance is this layer, this layer's width divided by two. And now when I click off, it attaches itself plus that offset that we still had in here. The spacer is still the same. So if I go up here and I adjust the spacer, it's going to work like it did before. So now when I undo that, so now all I have to do is right click on exposition, copy expression only. Let me turn on the rest of these layers. And let me change the text links here so you can see when I paste this that it's still going to work. Call this one motion design. And you can see it's, it's still working off the old expression that we had written that was hard coded in based on just one length of text. Let's call this one tutorials. Toolkitting templates. All right. So again, I right clicked on this exposition, copy expression only. And when I highlight all of these and paste, everything jumps into place. So if I highlight this and when I when I click on exposition here, it selects both keyframes. And as long as I'm on a keyframe, it's going to move both of these together. All right, so I think we can see enough of those. So now if I highlight tutorials and I start typing baller effects, everything after that is going to stick with it. So you can see it all moves together now. So that's the one tweak and fix that you can make if you want to have different lengths of text within your scroll and have you off and running.